What's up guys, this is yours truly, Empress Chassie Warmington, aka All That Chass, aka Lupus Slayer. Do apologize, I haven't been bringing you all, you know, information about chronic illnesses and immune uh, diseases. This is auto, March is officially Autoimmune Disease Awareness Month. And so I was trying to bring you guys different autoimmune diseases and give you information about them. Just in case you are experiencing any of these type of symptoms or having any of these type of complications or you have anybody in your family or friends that may be battling any type of autoimmune diseases um, or Ill and chronic illnesses. So um, we're going to go ahead and start this out. Thank you for watching for all those who tuned in. Thank you so much. I really appreciate your support. Okay, so we're going to start with the Julian Barr syndrome. Julian Barr syndrome is a autoimmune um, disease. It um, it messes with your nervous system. Okay, um, it can also cause muscle weakness, uh, reflex loss, and numbness and tingling in parts of your body. It can lead to par uh, paralysis. Uh, which is usually temporary, but you can still receive, still get them. It says most people uh, recover, even those with severe cases, which is a good thing. In fact, 85% of people with Julian Barr syndrome make a full recovery within 6 to 12 months. So that's a real good thing. Whew. Once you get better, the chances of it returning is very small. So now let's talk about the causes of the Julian Barr syndrome which is also abbreviated as, you know, GBS for the Jordan, Jordan for it. It says the causes for Julian Barr syndrome can happen to anyone, but it's most common in people 50 years of age or older. No one's sure, um, no one's sure if a germ or a virus, um, like the Zika virus, I know you guys remember the Zika virus, um, causes GBS, uh, which is Julian Barr syndrome. It could be that some illness alter your nerve system and your nerve cells, so your immune system starts to view them as threats. Others think your immune system forgets which cell it should attack. It usually shows up a few days or a week after a cold stomach virus or the flu. In rare cases, surgery or vaccinations can trigger it. Um, you may hear doctors mention, um, what's this, Camp Campali, Campali bacter, Camp I don't even know how to pronounce this word, Campali bacter. That is a type of bacteria associated with Julian Barr syndrome. Campylobacter, Campylobacter, I guess that's the name of it, whatever. When you have it, your immune system begins attacking your nerve cells. Um, that weakens their ability to send signals, um, signals to send signals to your brain. Um, you, and your muscles then can't respond like they need to respond. Um, as a result, your brain gets fewer messages and... And of course, because it get fewer messages to your brain, it ends up your body doesn't get the messages at all either. So the Julian Barr syndrome, um, the symptoms of it, uh, strikes quickly. Um, you usually feel it in your arms and in your legs, you know, which, you know, most people who have nerve damage or have some type of nerve, severe nerve issues normally happens in their arm and their legs. It can come from trauma. It can come from Car, like car, car accidents, like for me, I have, that's how my nerve and antibody trauma came about from a car accident. So it can cause, you know, different ways your nerve cells can get messed up. Um, but, you know, uh, most people notice, notice weakness in their muscles or they would, um, it feels like, like pins and needles, like those sharp pains in their muscles and stuff, uh, tingling in your hands and in your feet which can be kind of tricky because sometimes if you sit down on your hand too long or you put, position your hand or your feet too long, you can start having this tingling sensation. So you kind of like have to try to guess what is what. 
and stuff. And most people, they don't ever think that it's more than just, you know, them having their hand in a certain position so long. So, you know, a lot of people don't ever think about Julian Barr syndrome. Most people haven't even heard of it. I had never heard of it either until I started um, dealing with autoimmune um, deficiencies and diseases myself. So that's when I start learning about different types of autoimmune diseases. And so, um, you know, um, but your reflexes, you know, can be slower. Um, you could be feeling really tired and sluggish if you have Julian Barr. And again, this is the tricky thing. If you, if you, with mostly every autoimmune disease, a chronic illness, or chronic diseases, they have a lot of the very same similar basic symptoms. Most of their basic symptoms are weakness, fatigueness, having uh, issues, holding things, stumbling, staggering, um, having problems with their continuity, um, having problems with um, balance and stuff like that, you know. So it can be really tricky when it comes to autoimmune diseases to pinpoint a lot of times which one it is. So that's why it takes a, lo a series of tests and it's a long, it can be a long process depending on what's going on in your body and how your body is or is not responding to certain medications that may be given to you um, for autoimmune diseases, okay? Um, or, or to treat your symptoms to so that they can find out exactly what type of autoimmune disease that you have. Um, but, you know, if those symptoms get worse, as always, you should dial 911, that's a given. But um, those are particularly the symptoms of, you know, of Julian Barr syndrome. It doesn't seem significant because, of like, to be honest, but that's just a common symptom. Those are common symptoms people get from working, you know, even just an eight-hour shift or if they go to school and they work or if they just have, um, you know, a, a assistive immune system or whatever, they can experience weakness, they can experience dizziness, they can experience tingling. So, you know, again, these some of these same symptoms that this Julian Barr syndrome possess is similar symptoms that a lot of people have in general. Um, and experience, I'm sorry, allergies, guys, I'm so sorry. But, um, you know, your treatment, um, you go to your doctor, if your doctor have diagnosed you with Julian Barr syndrome, um, you will start, you know, getting like spinal tap, daughter will insert, the doctor, sorry, will insert a needle into your back, lower back, and take small amount of spinal fluid out so that they can check the protein level because a lot of times too, that's, you know, if you have low protein or you have too much protein in your body, it can cause problems. And I know for me, I used to have um, too much protein in my body at one point in time. And that was weird because I didn't understand how I had too much protein in my body. But I, I used to have that at one point in time. But, you know, those are some things that this, you know, that's information pretty much about Julian Barr syndrome. It's not, doesn't seem very uh, severe, significant compared to many of the other autoimmune diseases that are out there. There's over a hundred different types of autoimmune diseases and every year there's a different kind that seems to pop up. So, you know, whatever. Now, what we're going to talk about now is chronic inflammatory dimelinating <laughs> dimelinating I don't even know if I pronounce that word. Let's do this. Because I want you all to make sure. I, I told you I don't be pronouncing these words because they be just having these words. I'm like, what the hell does that mean? Like, how do you even pronounce it? How do you begin to even fix your mouth to pronounce words like that? So let's see. Okay, we're finna. Let's, let's go. Here we go. Demyelinating. Okay, there we go. Demyelinating pola. Chronic inflammatory <laughs> diamelinating <laughs> polyneuropathy. I'm sorry, it's just these words. Oh my gosh, like who comes up with these names for these 
symptoms. They need to be knocked in their damn head. Maybe they ass crazy. I don't know. This is funny. <laughs> but we're going to call it for short, C-I-D-P, okay? Because I'm not going to be trying to pronounce chronic inflammatory dialinating polyneuropathy. I'm not going to have to say that. I'm not saying all of that. It just sounds, I don't know, there's too much in my mouth. It just feels like blockage in my mouth. I don't like that, okay? I don't like stuff blocking my mouth. <laughs> but anywho... Okay, <laughs> CIDP is a neurological disorder, a condition that targets the body's nerves. Again, like most autoimmune diseases, they target the dang old nerves. Always something about the nerves. Symptoms aren't the same for everyone, but you may feel tired and have areas of numbness and pain. Again, if you just remember when I was explaining what the Julian, Julian Bar syndrome, uh, syndrome is, it's the same. That's a also, you know, the Julian Barr syndrome is also an autoimmune disease. So it's, as you can see, the CIDP and the Julian Barr um, syndrome have the exact same type of symptoms. So again, that's why it's really hard a lot of times to pinpoint exactly what type of autoimmune disease that person have you have to go through extensive testing a lot of time because this is proving that it has the same symptoms even from previous videos that i did um this month for autoimmune diseases if you notice most of those same autoimmune diseases from rheumatoid arthritis to multiple sclerosis um lupus um, inflammatory bile disease, a lot of them have the exact same symptoms. So you, here we go with this and it has the same symptom as the Julian Barr uh, syndrome. So this is why, you know, I, you can't just ignore stuff because it's, it's similar to something else. And that was my, something that I did. I was like, when I was experiencing you know, the symptoms and did, of lupus and didn't understand why I was experiencing it feeling and stuff just take the behind suit doctor stop being rebellious anywho um it can slow your reflexes again julian Barr and other autoimmune it can slow your reflexes uh make your arms and legs feel weak uh you may have symptoms of for at least eight weeks uh for the cidp uh to be considered the cause okay most people need treatments and and the sooner you begin it, the better chance of your complete recovery. Um, sometimes symptoms go away for a long time and then come back later. Autoimmune diseases are like that. Chronic illnesses are like that. The symptoms, they can go away for long periods of time and then they can come back and put you on your back, literally. Um, anyone can get um, the CIP, the CIDP, uh, but it's most common in older adults, um, and more in men than in women. Um, as many as 40,000 people in the USA may have, um, the condition or may get the condition, but you know, that's still up in the air. It's not, you know, edged in stone. So let's see what causes it. What causes the, um, chronic inflammatory dilaminating, um, polyneuropathy condition. Um, experts aren't sure why people get it. Go figure, right? Um, they don't know what is, uh, they do know that it is caused by inflamm the infl inflammation of your nerves and nerve roots, but they don't know what causes it to do that. The swelling can destroy the uh, protective covering around the nerves known as myelin. Million, I mean, my myelin, myelin, myelin. It can hurt nerves, fiber, and slow the nerves' ability to send signals. Uh, this is what causes the weakness because, and the pain, and the fatigueness, and the numbness because it's not sending signals to your brain. So, and you know, your brain isn't going to know to defend or whatever. Um, <laughs> this is ironic, right? See, I'm going to tell you what I do. Um, I get my resources from Mayo Clinic and from WebMD. Right now, I'm using WebMD.com. 
And um, I was just talking, compared this to the Julian Barr syndrome. And guess what? This is what it says. Is it, it has this in it. It says, is it the same as the Julian Barr syndrome? No. C, uh, CIP, CIDP is closely related to Julian Barr syndrome, but it is definitely not. They're both are nerve problems. They both cause system symptoms such as weakness, numbness, uh, but the GBS, which is the Julian Barr syndrome, usually comes on days or weeks after a person has an illness, such as stomach bug. The CIDP, though, which is the chronic um, inflammatory dilaminating uh, polyneural, polyneural, Polyurethane, para, para, whatever. Y'all know what I'm saying. <laughs> it's a link to the illness with GP, GB, GBS. Boy, these are some tongue tigers. You hear me? <laughs> Once treated, most people recover fairly quickly. CIDP, on the other hand, tends to be longer term problem. Um, in rare cases, people who don't recover from the um, Julian Barr syndrome often get the CIDP. So, how is it diagnosed? There's no test to necessarily diagnose um, the CIP, CIDP. Um, instead, your doctor will ask questions about your symptoms, um, start to how you feel, you know, and do a physical examination and all of that stuff. Give you tests, you know, check your antibodies and all that. Check your nerve cells and stuff. You know, they put the dye in you, ink dye into your body, and they do all the they check your nerve cells out to see what's going on with you. Um, but you know, is it can, you know it that's that's just pretty much it in a nutshell. Um, what this um CIDP is um now it can also have other other related issues or treatments let me go up here and um oh it just shows the different types of treatments I'm not going to try to pronounce hardly any of that stuff other than the stem cell transplant the immune the immunotherapy the plasma exchange PE the intravirus um, immune, uh, what's this? Immunoglobulin, globulin, whatever that is. And the um, CAR T, what's this? CAR T, steroids, steroids, something. CAR T, steroids, whatever. Hell, honey, I'm not no doctor. I'm not trying to be pronouncing all these damn words. I ain't doing it. But anyway, that's what pretty much um, chronic inflammatory dialing knitting, knitting uh, polyneuropathy disease is. So, you know, just again to reiterate with autoimmune diseases, they, they a lot of them have a lot of the same symptoms and they have symptoms that are things that people mostly commonly get from working to, you know, if you work and you get tired and so you may feel weak, you may feel a little numbness, you may feel exhausted, you know, you may have these kind of problems, you may stagger because when you're tired, your body's exhausted, you know, you can stagger, you can have balance issues. Um, so a lot of times it's so easy to just ignore because you don't think it is, but when you're obsessed, uh, when you are obsessively tired and exhausted and even if you have anemia because a lot of times people be like oh it's just my just the anemia oh you know i do have you know vitamin d deficiency and stuff it could be something much different more, much more in depth with that because and i'm just going to throw this in here right quick um uh, when i was i know one of the things um with a lot of the previous doctors that i had is they would just look at the fact that i you know, have anemia. They looked at the fact that I, you know, had the tendency to have potassium and magnesium deficiencies and vitamin D deficiency. So anytime I would go to the doctors, you know, they wouldn't really look up, really 
run tests on me and stuff, even when I was specifically request, you know, because I'm just like, no, it's something more. I like, I can't explain it. I say, I know I might not be a doctor or, you know, a surgeon and this is in my profession. I said, but I know my body and I'm like, this is my body. And I'm just letting you know that there's something more going on with my body. And a lot of times what I have found out, there's a lot of doctors that do not want to hear you out. They like to ignore you. They like to tell you that it's in your head, that you're just overthinking because it's like less work for them to do. They don't want to have to run the tests and they don't want to have to do certain things. But you, that's why like, I, I don't be afraid to change doctors because for me, I changed my PCPs three different times. And on the third time for me, that third time was a charm. Three, third time was a charm for me, my PCP. She looked over my records. She looked over things that was done. She looked over um, my la previous lab work. She looked over everything. And she just immediately sent me to a specialist because she's just like, okay, they're doing the same stuff. Nothing is working. You know, they're doing the same things and she's still just having the same problems and they're just getting worse. So obviously what they're doing is not working. So she just starts sending me to specialists. And going through the specialist is when I started getting, having tests done that I never even heard of. I never even knew there was a test where you are strapped down to a table. <laughs> now that for me was really hard. Like I really like psychologically, that was really hard for me to process that and to get that test done. I will put it off. I, I remember when I found out what the test, where the detail, we put it off. I had kept putting it off because for me, it was psychological uh, for me because of, uh, uh, of a bad situation that happened to me when I was younger. Um, you know, there was, it, it was, it was a tragic, a, a tragic situation for me. Um, a traumatizing rather. <laughs> Not, you know, it, it still was tragic for me. I feel like it was tragic for me, but it was very traumatizing for me. So I was really nervous about being strapped to a table that I didn't want to do. But that was part of finding out what was going on with me. But that was a test that I never knew existed. So there could be different things that come about that you didn't know exist. But all in all, do not just ignore things in your body, especially when it happens on a regular basis. Try to keep a log. I know it's easier said than done because even me, even though I have a log, it still be challenging for me. Let me see if I can show you all this log that I have uh, in my clipboard. Where's my, where's my clipboard? Where's my, where's my clipboard? Okay, so I remember now I took it off my clipboard, duh. I'm like, what the heck? Because I'm using my clipboard for something else. I knew I wasn't going crazy though. But this is what I would do is I keep a log. What I do is like common symptoms that I know I have on a regular basis or that comes very frequent. What I did is I made a chart. On this chart, it says health chart. That's what I call it. Um, I have, let me just put one down. I have for my date, then I have um, different types of symptoms, like right here it says any lupus symptoms flared up, any vasovagal syncope symptoms flared up, any rheumatoid arthritis symptoms flared up, migraine, nosebleed, vomiting, uh, regurgitating, when or when I eat or when I do not eat, uh, back, neck, arm, foot pain, swelling, um, breathing issues, Sweat, night sweat, uh, weakness, loss, um, lo loss of strength when after eating, uh, took all meds, sleepwalk insomnia, spasm, spell, uh, sleep, I mean, spasm, spells, restless, um, get me faint or pass out, get lethargic. So I have my chart that for me that I write 
when I have symptoms, I could just, I, and I put inside of each box, yes, no, yes, no, so that I can just circle them. And then down here, I have a section where I put my notes. For me, I have to actually go to the extent because of how aggressive the chronic illnesses and diseases that I have. So I actually have, you know, like a lot of, I have a lot, <laughs> I keep, you know, I try to keep as much record as possible so that I can have it for my doctors. When I go to my doctors, they can see how frequent I'm having these symptoms. Um, cause it, that can help them better try to understand what kind of treatment is, or it's not working or try something different. Cause you know, and then, you know, with some of these chronic illnesses, and diseases, these autoimmune diseases, you can get treatment. You can be self-medicating yourself just by changing your diet. Um, I saw well, uh, one of my friends, Kylie, she actually changed her diet up where she's not doing any kind of um, flour, like cake flour, bread flour, um, no sugars. You know, she's changed her diet up. And I'm going to tell you, it, 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 is, it is hard to do that when you're not used to it. Even when your life is at stake, you know, it's your health and your life is literally at stake. It's really hard to do that. Because you're not, your body can go into shock. And I'm going to tell you, when your body go in shock, it's just imagine how, you know, somebody be like, oh, you get off drugs very easy. All you got to do is go get detox. And you do that. Let me tell you, it's really hard for your body to adjust to change when it has constantly had that, had it that way for so many years, for so much, so long period of time. And some people actually die early, excuse me, even though they become healthy, finally become healthy, they will die because their body still haven't recovered from the shock. So you have to, some people can stop cold turkey, then some people can't like me. Make it actually cut stuff off cold turkey because my body is very used to it. The only thing that I have struggled with the most um, with cutting off cold turkey has been cheese. Cheese and coffee have been the only two things that I really have struggled with the most cutting when, you know, to cut cold turkey because I don't just crave it. Like my body doesn't just feed it. I really get, I have my, I have like my body was shut down. I would go and we have, I would get so sick that I would be sweating and my skin would break out. Like I'm serious. Like I would be throwing up constantly, constantly until I get, till I get my body that fixed. Like my body goes through that and I'll be trying everything else. I'd be trying to, you know, improvise and do everything else to try to calm it down and it just makes it worse. I get sicker and it gets to the point where my body can't even take it. And I would just, my body would just shut down. And so, um, and I just shut down from just being weak, but I would be in so much excruciating pain. So sometimes you can't just cut off cold turkey, but you can gradually do it. Start substituting stuff like for, uh, for me, I'm a chocolate, chocoholic too. That's another thing. I love chocolate. So for me, um, to break the chocolate spell, <laughs> I do carob instead of cocoa. Um, you know, something better alternative, even cocoa, natural 100% cocoa isn't bad for you, but overconsumption of anything can be bad for you, whether it's strawberries, apples, bananas, it, it, grapes, it don't matter if it's healthy, if it's, if it's an overconsumption of it to your body, it can, it can turn around and be bad for you, so. Balance and moderation is, is key. Okay, so now we're going to go to paralysis, which is also um, an immune um, disease. Uh, paralysis is a chronic skin condition caused by overactive immune system. Systems include flaking, inflammation, and thick, white, silvery, red patches of skin. Paralysis treatments include steroid creams, occlusions, occlusions, I'm sorry, light therapy and oral medications such as bio, biologics. <clears throat> um, it can, 
you know, there's a lot of different types of things that, um, with pariasis, um, you could get them, um, through genetics or you could get it through, <coughs> excuse me, sometimes swimming in lakes or oceans, you know, certain, sometimes seawater and ocean water doesn't, you know, mellow out good with people. Everybody can't swim in the ocean. Everybody can't swim in the sea or swim in the lake, swim in the river. Because there's different types of adjuncts in um, microscopic bacteria, germs in those in in those particular waters. That's why, like, if you swim in lake, open lakes, um, oceans, rivers, um, seas, you really open yourself up to parasites. And a lot of people don't realize that because you got to understand those a lot of bacteria and parasites and viruses lives in those type of uh, water. Bed, so uh, bodies of water. So when you put yourself in those waters, you got to make sure you have a very strong immune system. Even when you have a very strong immune system, you can still become um, prey to and victim to bacteria and parasites and things like that that are in those waters. So different things can cause you know paralysis and cause you to have them. Um, and of course, you know, the symptoms are very easy to identify. Your skin start peeling, your skin start getting severe and stuff. You start getting a lot of patches on your skin. And another thing with chronic illnesses, as you can all see with my skin, anybody see my skin before and before the lupus start getting really aggressive? Y'all know my skin was never like this, but it started getting more aggressive um, my skin started really breaking out. I started really having a lot of problems. I started getting um, the steroid medication, started putting a lot of weight on me and stuff. So my skin has started breaking out a whole lot. Now this right here, though, that came from a burn. That's not it. I was eating a, um, uh, a patty, a veggie patty. And and I and it was it just came out and I don't know what I was thinking about because I I knew it just came out and they told me because I seen it when it just came out and me being greedy because I wanted it so bad I just bit into it real I mean like not like a big bite because I knew the feeling was very hot but very little and then some of it because they hadn't you know had the time to settle a little bit it was still loose so it just fell out and it burned but. All of this right here, all of this skin breakage and stuff, that's from autoimmune disease issues. That's from the lupus. The lupus also, you know, because just because you have, there's five different types of lupus. And just because you have one type doesn't mean you can't have more than one. To me, I have multiple types of lupus. I have the skin and I also have um, the most aggressive and deadly kind, which is the um, lupus SLE. But... Pariasis, by I'm glad I don't have the pariasis, but the lupus, if um, skin condition is a lot like pariasis, so that's why you have to, you definitely need to know the difference because it is a different types of treatments, similar, a very lot of similar treatments, but the lupus is way worse. You know, skin lupus um, disease is way worse than the pariasis. The pariasis, actually, um, my one of my nephew, he actually was dealing with that, but he started, you know, was getting treatment on a regular basis, and now he doesn't have it anymore. His skin has been completely cured. He's been completely cured from it altogether. So you have to know, you, you go to the doctor, make sure you deal with specialists who are very proficient, who are patient, who doesn't mind explaining things to you, um, because that's going to help you, um, help you you know cure get cured but um you know these are the three chronic uh, autoimmune diseases that i wanted to cover today um which is the julian um bar syndrome um <laughs> the chronic inflammatory dami okay here we go demyelinate demyelinating uh, what's this? Okay, so the chronic inflammatory damelinating pol what's this? Polo oh, polyneuropathy. Um, that's one, and then the paralysis. So these are the three that I wanted to talk to you all about. 
but that's pretty much those in nutshells those are you know there's not too much details as far as like needed necessary details about those because they're not as aggressive or as um deadly as other ones but you still want to make sure that you get them get yourself checked out and again you know um it's easy for us to push stuff off because when well, we're normally used to dealing with tiredness, exhaust, exhaustion, and um, and having issues from working because we're tired and stuff, we don't ever think it's more than that. But if you start noticing certain change, like you start feeling nauseated, um, all of a sudden start feeling lightheaded, all of a sudden start feeling, you know, even if it's just for a short period of time, start feeling kind of short of breath, you know, anything that's... Um, that's you that's all the ordinary but at the same time that's ordinary but at the same time unusual like you see like it's more aggressive or it's more frequent or you know or just feel something different with it go to the doctor because you could be battling an autoimmune disease there's over 100 different types and normally when one if you have a mild type of autoimmune disease if it goes untreated it normally develops into a more aggressive and more deadly form of autoimmune disease. So you want to make sure that you get checked out, okay? But thank you all for watching, for listening to me. Please make sure you click on the link and sign my petition. It only takes about 10 seconds. You don't have to donate any any monies or anything. That's up to you solely because I don't know why change that word automatically do that. It, when it's, you know, it automatically asks you if you want to make a donation. And I think that pops up first. And I don't like that because I don't want people to get scared and get deterred from, you know, wanting to support it because they think they have to make a donation. No, you don't have to make a donation. But please just sign it. It only takes like 10 seconds for you to give me your signature and sign with your email and your government name, please, because they do verify. <laughs> You know, thank you so much. And again, you guys have a great day. Enjoy the rest of the week. God bless one love. Peace. And I'm out of here.